A lot of my times with consulting, it has to do more with people and the practices and how the soil is cared for, not so much the soil itself. So people will be like, oh, my soil's bad. I gotta throw my soil out. It's, you know, I, I overused it, or, you know, I hear that a lot from cannabis growers that you have a very, you know, cannabis is a very heavy feeder. So they think that their soil is completely depleted after a year, but really it's how it's cared for, how it's managed. They're not adding organic matter. They're have, experiencing rapid dry out or they're watering really fast. And because it's a peat based medium or cocoa based, that water runs right out. And with that goes the nutrients and the microbes. So um, it's very, very important that when you're doing this, that you're able to kind of take an unbiased look at your practices. Are you being consistent? What is your watering? How fast is your water going through your soil? What does your soil feel? What does it look like? And that's where this microscope is really helpful because you can really see the difference in the particle sizes between water, or between soil that's compacted and soil that is drains too quickly. So, so beyond the microbes, there's a, a really good use for this microscope. So even if you're not so into the biology, this will help you figure out other components of your soil. So I think I started talking and I forgot to shake the sample, didn't I? It's okay, we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Do a good 15 seconds here. Okay, and see, you can already see the difference of the color here. See how it's real cloudy, but it's kind of gray. Whereas here we have this has settled. You see that nice kind of humic, fulvic, gold milk chocolate color. That's, that's kind of what we're looking for. This is looking very cloudy, but it looks like it's going to get real a lot, a lot clearer, clearer as it starts to settle here. So. Go ahead and move this down here. And for those of you that wear glasses, never look through the microscope with your glasses on. You could end up uh, hurting yourself very badly. Okay, so I always like to look at multiple slides from every sample so I can pull from different depths of the slide. It's crazy you, how different you will see from what depth you take your sample. Nematodes tend to sink towards the bottom. They're heavier. There's no oxygen in here, so there's nothing to really keep them going until you shake it up again. Flagellates tend to float more to the top. You know, depending on how your quality of your sample, you know, you might have them throughout. The, but that's something that I've kind of noticed in taking samples um, that I tend to find more nematodes when I pull from the bottom. So when you're looking at something, if you only look at one slide, you're not looking at it enough because it's, we're, there's so much life in such a small amount of soil, it will blow your mind. You really have to look at, I would say, at least five to ten slides of every sample if you can, or multiple samples, multiple test tubes from the same sample, just because there's, you know, soil will, the chemistry of soil will change from one millimeter to the next, and that's the same microbially. Um, but it's also important, too, to look at consistency. If you see one bad guy, and then you look at five more slides and don't see another one, don't worry about it. It's when you see those same bad guys over and over again, and you don't see any of the good guys. So there's not so much of a black and white when it comes to these good guys and bad guys. It has to do with how many of them and how many of the bad guys there are before you really get concerned. Because this is an ecosystem we're looking at. All of these organisms are present all the time. The soil chemistry is what allows the mi what microbes to be dominant. So that's kind of what we're looking at today. So I like to take one drop for, you can do two depending on your cover slip size. For these 18 by 18 slips, you want to do a single drop. I think the size bigger is 24 by 24 and that um, 
is for two drops. But for this, and if you're doing any kind of actual counting, you want to do one drop because that's what works with um, the Elaine spreadsheet. And so it's kind of Elaine has set the the whole. I gotta take a moment just to give a shout out to Dr. Elaine Ingham because none of us would be doing this without her and without her making this so digestible for people to be able to do this out in the field in their day-to-day -day life as a farmer. Once again, you do not have to be a scientist or anything to, to be able to do this. So we're gonna do one slide of this one here. And this is the trickiest thing. This can throw off your whole counts and everything um, by how you lay this cover slip because if you don't evenly disperse your drop throughout this cover slip, you're going to have a lot of material in one corner or one portion of the slide and it's going to throw, it's going to make your sample either look really rich or more deficient than it actually is. So it's really important here when you do this and I am a caffeine drinker so I have a little bit of a shaky hand but um, <laughs> You want to make sure you take your edge here and you let the edge of the cover slip just catch that drop ever so slightly. And you see it, and you slide it back and forth across. 